What's one warning sign that all women should know about a man? Like well, the first warning sign you should know about a man is his consistency. If he is not consistent, he will not be consistent in anything he does. A real man is very consistent and adamant about anything they do because they know with consistency brings results. If you're a weak man, you give up. A strong man, he's consistent and he does not give up until he reach what it is that he is trying to reach and that's his highest potential. First and foremost, I'm gonna give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashim, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Today's lesson is gonna be over consistency, right? A strong warning to men. Consistency, a strong warning to men. The definition of a consistency goes into saying the quality of always behaving. The quality of always behaving. So it's a consistent quality of always behaving. It says, or performing in a similar way. So behaving or performing, forming always in a similar way, right? It says, or of always um, hoping in a similar way. So your behavior, your performance are, uh, I'm sorry, happening, are, are something that's always happening in a similar way, right? So your, your performance, your behavior are something that's always happening in a similar way. That is consistency. I'm going to give an example. An example, it reads, it says, consistency is carrying out something the same way or something staying the same as it's achieved in, sim in a particular way. So it's always being carried out. So it's always happening the same way, right? They use the word always are can you know the performance are behaving so it's always doing the same thing over and over again right consistency uh touch on a few points of the video very strong video that she brought out a very mighty lesson the sis went into and um she says <clears throat> one warning sign like one red flag about a man if he's not consistent if he doesn't if he's not consistent about what he does she says um he will not be consistent in anything he does right so if you're not consistent you gotta learn how to be consistent it says consistency she goes to say consistency brings results right consistency brings results so these things i was never really taught right but i did learn um and these things can be learned so she says, consistency brings results. But she says, a weak man gives up. That's very true. A weak man gives up. They'll find an excuse to make to why they can't perform or do something to continue on with what they started, right? That is a weak man. They'll find an excuse, right? They're saying, there's sayings that go behind that. And one of the sayings that I can think of right now is blessings come with discipline. Right? Blessings come with discipline. It's not, you don't do things. Now, motivation is good, but motivation won't keep you doing it over and over so that you can reach your results, the results that you want. Motivation is just get you started, right? But discipline, doing something when you don't want to do it, right? When you don't want to do it. And that is the quali a quality, a strong quality of a man is doing something they don't want to do. Right. So, uh, again, as a man, if you don't have it, you can get it, work on it, stop giving up so quickly. Right. This is James chapter one and verse eight. The book of James chapter one and verse eight, it says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Right. So a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. He'll find a way not to do it. Right. There's something about it that makes him uncomfortable. There's something about it that he reason why he don't want to do it. There's something. There's always something. He's unstable in everything he does. He never completes it, right? So you want to be the man that isn't unstable. You want to be stable in your ways. Somebody that you can be rely. You know, people can rely on you. Be faithful, right? Right. Somebody that they know that this man is faithful to the cause. This man is faithful to something. Anything he starts. He's going to finish it, right? So this is something that we want to make sure that we aim for. This is 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. <clears throat> it says, and 
And the thing that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men. He said, commit these things that you have heard about me to faithful men so that they can teach. It says, who shall be able to teach others also? This is what we're out there doing. We are hoping and praying to teach and bring up men that are faithful, that won't be quick to give up. They won't be quick to leave. They won't be quick to find an excuse. My son, my daughter, my wife, my grandma, my dog, anything. They'll use any type of excuse to not stay true to the task, to not help build the nation. They'll find any excuse. They'll be unstable in this truth, right? So Paul told us to teach men that are faithful, that are consistent, right? <clears throat> it goes to say, verse three, thou therefore endure hardship. And this is one of the things, it's like your hardness. So this is one of the things that cause men to fall off because it starts to get too hard, right? When it starts to get hard, this is when people are quick to fall off. This is when people are quick to fall away. This is, like they say, uh, uh, this is where it separates the men from the boys, right, so to speak. When it's getting ready to get hard, we're getting ready to see who's actual men, right? And that's what happens in this truth, too. You have men, when it starts getting hard, they quit, right? They find out they're really not up to it. They find out that they're really not men. They're really not men. They are, they are men. They're just weak, right? Right? So we don't want weak, weak men. We want strong men. <clears throat> it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. No man that warreth entangleth himself of the, of the affairs of this life. So that's something that you don't want to do. He's giving you good wisdom here. You don't want to entangle yourself. If you are a soldier of Christ, if you're a soldier of the Most High, you do not want to entangle yourself because you can. You can find things that'll keep you from the from the task, from the faith, that'll keep you from nation building. You will find you can find things that will tangle you up, right? And you don't want to be those men that are tangled up in the affairs of this life, right? My son got a football game. I'm his coach or I'm his assistant coach. These things you don't want to do, right? Whatever the case may be, whether it be politics families you got something that's more important that's going to bring your family more joy and glory if you stay consistent right it says it says uh that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier right so the one that pleased the one that chose you to be a soldier was yahweh and yahweh shine and you should do these things because it's going to bring pleasure to them, right? When it's all said and done, it says, I'm going to read it again. <clears throat> it says, it's like you. How long? Okay. okay, so it says, it says, no man that worth entangling himself with the affairs of this life, that he may be, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. It says, and if a man also strive for mastery, which we should always be striving for mastery, it says, yet so, yet is he, uh, he not crowneth, except he strive lawfully. So we strive righteously, right? We are kings of righteousness. We are not kings of unrighteous. We will not be ruling, nor will we make it, and we do rule. We will not be ruling in unrighteousness. This is why it's important for us to know the law, because we will be ruling in, in righteousness, right? Um, we will not be unrighteous kings. It says, the husbandman that laboreth must be first partakers of the first fruit, right? So you cannot be, um, <clears throat> do not be afraid of hard labor. Do not be afraid of hard work. Right. This is Mac, uh, Malachi chapter three and verse six. Malachi chapter three and verse six. It says, "For I am the Lord; I change not. 
therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. This is the type of characteristic and attitude that we have to have too. We have to be steady uh, on, on our on our square, right? We have to be firm in what we believe. We can't change. They, people know, oh, I can't go to his house because he keeps the Sabbath. I know he, I ain't seen him in years. You know what I'm saying? But I know he's been faithful to the cause. He's been faithful to the ministry. I still see him posting certain scriptures and things, and he's faithful. So they know, they're going to know that you are, uh, that you don't change. They're not, they're going to know that they can't persuade you. And this is the type of man that we need, right? I'm going to go to the book of Mark, chapter 13 and verse 13. It says, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Now, that's something that we already know, us being men of understanding, we know we're going to be hated for Yahweh Shai's namesake, for what he stood for. He stood for righteousness. And we know that we are in a, a world of wickedness and evil. And they don't like righteousness. They don't like good. So when we teach good, they're going to be against us. Right? It says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. We have to be consistent. We have to endure all the way until the end. We cannot be persuaded, right? <clears throat> this is Wisdom of Solomon. Let's see if this is what I want. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, and verse 17. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, right? So when we start to keep the laws, we have to desire to keep the laws. That is the desire of discipline, right? We have to desire discipline. It says, and the care of discipline is love. The care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of our laws. And the giving heed unto her laws is an insurance of incorruption. Right? So us keeping the laws is the insurance of incorruption. We are, we are uh, 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 faithfully, we know that us keeping the laws, being faithful to the laws, is going to give us eternal life. Right? We got to keep these laws. Right? And I got a few more scriptures. The book of Sirach, chapter 18, verse 14. He had mercy on, on them that receiveth discipline. I'm going to read it again. He have mercy on them that receiveth discipline. This is talking about just any discipline. But discipline none the least, right? Discipline. Discipline is something that you have to continuously do whether you like it or not, right? It says, He have mercy on them that receiveth discipline and that diligently seek after his judgment so again this is something you have to do whether you like it or not you got to keep doing it develop that habit develop that mental callus that you're going to keep doing it and do it no matter what and you're going to teach others to do so right <clears throat> it says this is the book of Sirach chapter 32 and verse 14 Sirach chapter 32 and verse 14 whosoever feareth the Lord will receive his discipline Right? So if you fear the Lord, you will receive his discipline. And they that seek him early shall find favor. Right? They that seek him early shall find favor. And this is what we all want. But the first part, part of it is to receive his discipline. Be disciplined. Be consistent about what you do. Right? Keep doing it. Even if you don't like it, the Most High God will bring you rest. He will bring you joy and comfort. You gotta believe in those things. This is the uh, book of Job, chapter 36 and verse 10. He openeth also their ears to discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. If they ob obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. But if they disobey, I'm sorry, if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword. And they shall die without knowledge. So, we open if we open our ears to di to discipline, and keepeth the commandments, and return from our iniquity, 
and be obedient, we will receive prosperity, right? So this is effort. This is work. This is consistently. You have to consistently do it. It's not a one-time thing. This isn't just do it because you feel like doing it. This is a consistent behavior, same type of behavior over and over again, right? It's something you have to do to receive that crown, to receive that victory, to receive that re reward, right? So we have to continue to keep pushing forward, right? We have to continue to run that race, right? Last one, <clears throat> this is Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 24. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 24 says, But his law have they despised and denied his covenant, and his statutes have they not been faithful. Right? So there's people that have not been faithful. There's people that knew about the laws, that knew about the covenants, laws, statutes, and commandments, and they started to walk in them, but they were not faithful. They were not consistent. We as men have to be consistent. Again, like she said, a weak man will not be consistent. They will fall off. You have got to keep going. I'm going to finish it up. It says, and have not performed his works. So we got to keep performing the works. So Lord willing, y'all was edified and y'all got some understanding. And I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh, Shalom, Wabrak, Mashbukah.